Great, good afternoon. In a short while, we will be joined by Maximo Torero, the Food and Agriculture Organization's Chief Economist. He will be here uh, to brief you on the FAO Food Price uh, Index. Um, sorry. Uh, um, on f sadly, uh, we are, I'm sad to report again uh, another attack on uh, peacekeepers in Mali, and we are um, unfortunately have to report that two of our peacekeeping uh, colleagues were killed this morning in Mali after their vehicle, an armored personnel carrier, uh, was hit by an improvised explosive device. This happened uh, outside of the town of Duenza in the Mopti region. Two other peacekeepers were injured in the attack. Um, our colleagues have managed to secure the area. We're trying to get a bit more uh, detail. Uh, this is the sixth incident uh, in which a convoy, a UN peacekeeping convoy, was hit since May 22nd. It is the second uh, fatal uh, attack on a UN peacekeeping uh, convoy in ju just this a week. Uh, the Secretary General condemns this new attack on our peacekeepers, who, as you know, are just fulfilling the mandate in Mali given to them by the Security Council in extremely challenging conditions. The Secretary General wishes a prompt recovery to the injured peacekeepers. Uh, the head of the UN mission in Mali, El Gassimwane, also condemned uh, this new attack. He also condemned the attack in the Caius region earlier this week, in which two members of the Malian Red Cross were killed. Despite these challenging circumstances, it's also important to note that our colleagues are continuing their mandated work. It is a, as an example, the UN peacekeeping mission helped to rehabilitate two bridges in the Mopti region, which had been destroyed in earlier attacks. The restoration of these two bridges will bring relief to the people of the region and will facilitate the resumption of travel, commerce, and activity, including between Mopti and, Bandia, Bianda, excuse me, and Bandiagara. Meanwhile, in the Kidal region and Gao region, peacekeepers assisted the population of Anefis and Tabancourt towns as part of their ongoing support to the population in the north. And a note for you on Myanmar to tell you that we are deeply troubled by the Myanmar military's decision to proceed with the execution of two pro-democracy activists after they received their death sentences. This is a blatant violation of the right to life, liberty, and security of persons as per Article 3 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The Secretary General reiterates his call for the respect of people's right to freedom of opinion and expression. To, he, and also to drop all charges against those arrested on charges related to the exercise of their fundamental freedoms and rights and for their immediate release of, uh, for the immediate release of all political prisoners in Myanmar. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights enshrines the principles of equality before the law, the presumption of innocence, the right to a uh, fair and public hearing by an independent and impartial tribunal, and all of the guarantees necessary for a person's defense. The Secretary General considers that the death penalty cannot be reconciled with the full respect of the right to life. Abolition is necessary and desirable for the enhancement of human dignity and the progressive development of human rights. Um, an update from Haiti and the security situation there. The, our humanitarian agencies are telling us that their ability to provide life-saving assistance is severely limited by worsening gang violence, especially in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince. At least 188 people have been killed, including 96 suspected gang members, according to the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, as well as the UN office in Haiti. Almost 17,000 people have been displaced from Port-au-Prince since April 24th alone. Incidents of kidnapping for ransom have increased dramatically, with some 200 cases in Port-au-Prince recorded in the month of May. That's according to the UN mission. Access to vulnerable communities is acutely restricted due to gang activity, hampering the implementation and monitoring of humanitarian interventions. Uh, our partners have also been unable to collect and deliver relief supplies due to lack of access to the port area. This week also marks one year since 
Transportation links to the south of the country were closed down by gang activity. Reaching the north is also problematic. Malnutrition rates in the Cité Soleil neighborhood of Port-au-Prince have risen 20 percent uh, of children under five are now suffering from acute malnutrition, a key indicator of a crisis situation. In spite of security constraints, UN agencies and partners continue to deliver relief items where possible. In 2022, the humanitarian community estimates that 4.9 million men, women, and children need humanitarian assistance. So far, $73 million have been received for Haiti's humanitarian response plan against an appeal of $373 million. Um, just staying on with humanitarian updates, in northern Ethiopia, we and our partners are continuing to provide humanitarian assistance across Tigray, Afar, and Amhara. In the past week, 320 trucks carrying food, nutrition supplies, and household items arrived in Tigray via the Samara Abala Mekele Road. Since the resumption of convoys at the beginning of April, food has now been sent to 68 priority districts across Tigray. More than 500,000 people have received assistance, but this needs also to be sustained as only about one third of the people targeted have received assistance under the current round of distributions, which began in October. The supply of fuel continues to constrain our operations with no additional supplies brought in during the past week. Reserves are running low again. In the neighboring, neighboring Afar and Amhara regions, humanitarian needs also remain extremely high. In Amhara, we and our partners have helped more than one million men, women, and children in the latest round of food distribution that began in mid-March. We've also been working with partners to conduct a nutrition screening alongside measles vaccination campaign, screening close to a million children in recent weeks. Efforts to increase the assistance continues in Afar. Some 924,000 people have received food assistance since late uh, February. Um, the Deputy Secretary General uh, Amina Mohammed will be traveling to Central Asia from the 5th to the 12th of June of this year, of course, to represent the Secretary General at the second international high-level conference on the International Decade for Action. The conference is entitled Water for Sustainable Development 2018-2028. That will take place in Tajikistan on the 7th and 8th of July. Following invitations from other countries in the region, the Deputy Secretary General will also visit Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, during her visits, she will engage firsthand with national authorities, UN staff, and other partners, including youth and women representatives, civil society organizations, on, to see how these countries are dealing with a three-dimensional crisis affecting food, energy, and finance efforts towards rescuing the sustainable development goals and leaving no one behind. In Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, the Deputy Secretary General will also participate in the signing ceremony of the first UN Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework developed as part of the repositioning of the UN development system. She will be returning back to New York on the 12th of June. And in a statement issued today, Amina Wad, the UN Crisis Coordinator for Ukraine, noted that we are marking 100 days since the start of the Russian invasion in Ukraine that started on 24th February. 100 days of suffering, devastation, and destruction on a massive scale. 100 days of unabated warfare, including indiscriminate bombardment, terrorizing civilians, and shelling hospitals, schools, and homes. 100 days of live loss and people uprooted, the lives of millions shattered. This war's toll on civilian is unacceptable, he said, stressing that no war, ha that, excuse me, that this war has no winner. Mr. Wad noted that at least 15.7 million people in Ukraine are now in urgent need of humanitarian assistance and protection, and numbers are rising by the day as the war continues to ravage. He did point out that more than 5 million children had their education suspended, 14 million people have had been forced to flee, more than 260 health facilities have come under attack, and severe damage to water systems has left millions of people without regular access to water and energy. With winter coming, risks to people's lives are severe. Mr. Wad added that we, along with more than 260 humanitarian partners in Ukraine, have scaled up, our, scaled up at record speed and deployed additional staff across the country to support the humanitarian response. 
our colleagues tell us that so far 7.8 million people with life-saving assistance have been reached so far. This includes almost an increase of almost 190,000 more people than reached last week. By now, more than 6.6 .6 million Ukrainians have received food and livelihood assistance. More than 2.7 million have been able to access health services and supplies. More than 1.6 million have received cash assistance, which is so critical for people as job opportunities continue to shrink and prices increase. On funding as of today, our flash appeal is 72% funded with $1.6 billion out of the $2.24 billion required. We thank our donors for their contribution and count on their continued support. In a statement we issued yesterday afternoon, the Secretary General welcomed the agreement by the government of Yemen and the Houthis to renew the truce in Yemen for an initial two months under the same terms as the original agreement. Mr. Guterres strongly urged the parties to complete the full implementation of the terms of the truce without delay in order to uphold the interests of all Yemenis who continue to suffer from one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. Also, I want to underscore uh, an example of the human uh, cost of this war. The UN Human Rights Office in Yemen said that for the past two months, as the truce has meant uh, has meant that a lot of people in Yemen have seen violence and hostilities decrease. But even so, between the 2nd of April and June 1st, the Human Rights Office gathered preliminary information indicating that at least 19 civilians were killed, 32 injured, in some 20 incidents of conflict-related violence. The majority of these casualties were caused by landmines, including improvised mines and explosive remnants of war. Uh, I think I was asked by someone in this room yesterday about Brazil, uh, I think it was you, Edward. Um, I can tell you that our team there, led by resident coordinator Sylvia Rooks, um, said that they offered solidarity to the victims of the heavy rains that caused destruction in the metropolitan areas of Recife in the northeastern region. Uh, our team is monitoring the situation with concern and recognizes the efforts of authorities at different levels to rescue people and minimize the immediate impact of disaster. On the ground in Recife, uh, the team is working, the UN team is working with local authorities to assess the impacts of the disaster, especially on children, pregnant and lactating women, and also providing psychosocial support. Uh, we're also supporting local authorities and partners to raise donations and share information with the impacted population. In post-disaster reconstruction period, the UN team will offer support to authorities to boost resilience in the city with UNICEF, UN Habitat, and the Office for Disaster Risk Reduction fully engaged with local authorities. Um, a couple of international days to flag to you. Today is World Bicycle Day. Uh, I biked to work this morning, uh, which highlights the uniqueness, longevity, and versatility of the bicycle. A simple, affordable, reliable, clean, and environmentally fit, sustainable means of transport. Today is also the International Day of Innocent Children Victims of Aggression, and Sunday is the International Day for the Fight Against Illegal, Underreported, and Unregulated Fishing, and it is also World Environment Day. In a message for the day, the Secretary General notes that the theme of, t of this year's World Environment Day, Only One Earth, is, simple, is a simple statement of fact. He stressed that this planet is our only home, adding that it is vital we safeguard the health and its health and atmosphere, the richness and diversity of life on Earth, ecosystems, because they're all finite resources. On Monday, there will be a briefing in this very room at 3 p.m. in the afternoon by the President of the European Council, Charles Michel. Uh, he'll be here to brief you, according to his office, on the war in Ukraine. I think Mr. Michel is addressing the Security Council, and he will be having a working lunch with the Secretary General of the United Nations as well. Edie. Thank you, Steph. A uh, couple of follow-up questions. Um, on the two peacekeepers killed in Mali, do we know where they're from? They were Egyptians. Um, thank you. And secondly, um, on Myanmar and the two death sentences mm -hmm. that the Secretary mm -hmm. General is protesting against. Could you send us some details on their names? Yes, and of cases? course, yes, that would have been helpful. Um, 
And also, does the Secretary General have any comment on uh, Sorry, court? Si, si, uh, uh, Sylviane, <laughs> no, Sylviane, I, it, Does I, no, hold, I, I can't. I can't hear. If you, you have to, just remove the phone if you don't mind. Thank you. Sorry. Does Does the Secretary General have any comment on um, a court in Myanmar uh, ruling that uh, a case for election fraud can go ahead uh, against? Aung San Suu Kyi about the um, election that her party won in November 2020. I mean, I, I think our call in Myanmar is for return uh, to democracy, to a for respect uh, of uh, the fundamental rights of all people in Myanmar, including. Uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, um, and I think I will leave it at that. Edward, and then Michelle. Uh, hi, Steph. A follow-up about the, the attack in Mali. Uh -huh. uh, first, I want to confirm that the location of this attack is Duenza, right? Yes, it's, it, they were going from Duenza. It was, it's out, took place outside of Duenza, and mm -hmm. they were going from Duenza to Timbuk, uh, Timbuktu. Uh, they were escorting, uh, from what I understand, they were escorting uh, civilian trucks. So, uh, according to your description, it seems like uh, the the attackers they understood they are UN 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 well, peacekeepers. I, I think. Listen, I think we have to first. We have to let the. <laughs> I mean, dust, I mean, my no, question. No, I know, I know, we have to let the dust settle a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is on these roads in that region. They're often improvised explosive device. Um, they're the intent is to disrupt uh, the lives of the Malian people, to disrupt transport, to disrupt uh, security. Uh, these roads are used by civilians, civilian trucks, civilian buses, but also by the security forces, uh, whether it's uh, the Malian uh, army or uh, UN, uh, UN peacekeepers. Um, the aim clearly is to kill and to disrupt. Uh, whether or not this was specifically targeted against this specific convoy, that's not something I can say at this, uh, at this time. Though we have been, our, our, our peacekeepers in the field have been victims over and over again uh, of improvised explosive devices. Thank you for answering me that question. Uh, uh, my my other, another question is the objective raised by, by the UN and the WHO about the COVID, COVID vaccination. Uh, last year, you said, uh, they said uh, the objective for UN is to finish 70% uh, of the population uh, in the middle of this year. It's uh -huh. only a month away. Uh, does the Secretary General think this target can be accomplished? Um. Uh, let me check with WHO. Um, I, Michelle Nichols, Reuters. Thank you, Stefan Dujarek, UN. Um, a follow-up on um, Martin Griffith's visit to Moscow. Mm -hmm. Has he made any progress on uh, opening up exports of UK, Ukraine grain? Um, Mr. Griffiths uh, was indeed in uh, Moscow for two days of, uh, of talks on behalf of the Secretary General. I think from what He's telling us he had frank and constructive discussions with counterparts in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of, uh, of Defense. As you know, um, the visit uh, follows the visit to Moscow by Rebecca Greenspan, the head of, uh, of UNCTAD last week. Um, it complemented her, her efforts to facilitate the exports of Russian grain fertilizer to the international markets. Uh, Mr. Griffiths, I think as the Secretary General has said, his mission is focused on seeking means to facilitate the export of Ukrainian grain and related foodstuffs uh, from Ukrainian uh, Black Sea ports. Madam. Thank you, Staff. I'll follow up on Michelle's question. Uh, Turkish officials are talking about an observation mechanism to be based in Istanbul but run by the UN 
for the grain export from Ukraine. Do you have any details on that for us? Um, there are a lot of moving pieces uh, in this um, in this puzzle. Uh, what we're what we're able to confirm is once pieces are in place. So I, I understand the. Uh, the frustration and the need uh, for answers as we see comments from various capitals. Uh, we are moving very methodically um, and confirming things as they happen. Once we have confirmation of something, we will share that with you. Are you getting any indications from Russia and Ukraine that uh, there might be an agreement next week when Lavrov visits Turkey on the grain export? Uh, we have seen a lot of positive comments come from various capitals, which is heartening. Um, but I'm not in a position to confirm dates uh, or to provide you with a, ca with a calendar at this point. Ms. Salome. Thanks, Steph. Uh, are you aware of uh, protests in Sudan apparently mm -hmm. have led to a death of a demonstrator? And this is marking that. I mean, we, I, you know, we've seen, uh, we've seen the reports uh, which are extremely concerning. It's not the first time that we have seen the Sudanese security forces use live fire on demonstrators. Uh, people have a fundamental right to express their opinion, to demonstrate, to demonstrate peacefully, and it is the responsibility of governments um, to ensure that that right is respected and not violated. Alan, and then I'll come back to you, Edie, and then we'll go to the screen. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, Belarusian media uh, are reporting that uh, President Lukashenko had a conversation with the SG and uh, he discussed the possibility of exports of Ukrainian grain through via the uh, Belarusian territory in exchange for the access of Belarusian goods to the ports in uh, Germany, uh, Baltics, and Poland, I guess. Uh, can you tell anything about this conversation? What, what I can tell you is confirm that the Secretary General spoke uh, to President Lukashenko uh, this morning uh, when the Secretary General was still in, uh, in Stockholm. Uh, what I will say is that they broadly, they discussed uh, the ongoing situation relating to uh, grain and uh, and fertilizer and trying to get those things onto the global markets. Edie? Uh, a, a follow-up on, on this question. Um, can you tell us if um, Ms. Greenspan and uh, Mr. Griffiths have any other travel plans? Are they coming back? Uh, Ms. Greenspan, I think you may very well see her here on Wednesday. Uh, we hope to have her to present uh, the second uh, report from the global crisis response that the Secretary General and her presented uh, about a month and a half ago. So she will be uh, in this room to present that update um, and she will share whatever information she's able to share. Uh, as for Mr. Griffiths, uh, as soon as I next, next uh, destination is confirmed, I will share that with you. Ms. Salome. Just wondering, it, the situation's been pretty tough for peacekeepers in Mali. Are you concerned about troop contribute more withdrawal, more countries withdrawing their troops? Have you heard from any concerns Listen, we, about that? We haven't that? heard. I, I, I'm not going to say we've heard from anyone in the last uh, 48 hours. I mean, um, I think the word grateful doesn't, uh, isn't strong enough to express how we feel towards those member states which continue to provide uh, many peacekeepers around the world in, in places where there's very little peace to keep, where there's very little political willingness from the parties to actually pursue uh, peace. Mali has been, I think, the hardest hit uh, mission, Egyptians, Jordanians, Chadians, and others have given uh, their lives for the people of Mali for the cause of peace, and we're eternally grateful uh, for their continued support. Uh, Abdel Hamid. Thank you, Stefan. Um, it has been noticed that uh, violence has been escalating in the occupied 
Palestinian territories in the last few days. Five Palestinians were killed in the last 48 hours, including the journalist Rodran Harun Rawasna and the young boy, uh, Ouda, Mohammed Ouda, of 17 years old. However, we haven't heard anything. The violence is being it reached all-time high. 65 Palestinians were killed from the beginning of the year, including five women and nine children. And we haven't heard of any statement well, I mean, regarding I, I, I the think, escalating uh, violence. First of all, we're obviously extremely concerned by the increased violence we've seen and the high intentions in the occupied uh, West Bank, including uh, the incidents over the last a uh, few days in which uh, three Palestinians, including a female journalist, uh, were shot and killed uh, by Israeli forces in Hebron, Jenin, uh, and Bethlehem. Uh, it's important that all sides, um, Secretary General appeals to all sides for calm and to take action that will lead us back to the path of uh, negotiations. We also need to see the Israeli security forces exercise maximum restraint and use lethal force only when strictly unavoidable uh, and in order to protect life. I think if you saw, if you read Mr. Uh, Venislan's briefing last week, I think he is very methodical on reporting regularly to the Security Council all of the incidents uh, that he is aware of. Okay. Uh, th go ahead. I mean, the journalist, uh, she, she doesn't have an American passport. She's not working for Al Jazeera. Nobody called for independent investigation. She was working for a local radio. I mean, we. we However, there was not we, even. I just. I mean, I just. I just. Abdul Hamid, I just mentioned it. I just spoke about it. I cannot be responsible for statements that other organizations or others may, may make or not uh, or, or not make. Uh, Maggie, and then we'll go to our guest. Hi, Steph. Um, you read Amin Awad's statement on Ukraine, but does the Secretary General have any comment on the days of this war? Well, I mean, I think it's – if he were to make a comment, it would be to just – renew his call for an end to the violence, uh, renew his call for unfettered uh, humanitarian access to all the, who need it uh, for the protection of, uh, of civilians. I mean, I think the, the, sooner the, the sooner the parties engage in, uh, in, diplomatic, um, in diplomatic efforts, uh, the better for the prospects of uh, of peace, um, and I think Mr. F he of course fully agrees with what uh, Amin uh, Awad has uh, has said, and we have seen. I mean, I, I think I, I read out the litany of suffering, of destruction, of the impact that this war has had on uh, on civilians, and I think from the first days of this uh, of this war, uh, the United Nations has been there. Uh, to support uh, the people of Ukraine in dealing with the impact uh, of this conflict. Um, yes, Linda, and then we will go to our guests. Um, thank you, Steph. Sort of apropos of that question, I was wondering if the Secretary General, if he can say anything public or has publicly, does he, what are his views or has he any concerns about the escalation in terms of the provision of the sort of highest tech weapons to Ukraine, um, a sense of whether this can accelerate the fighting or might well, have I, I mean, any, in any conflict, uh, more weapons are an accelerant. Um, okay, uh, Maximo, are you with us?